Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Intersect Talks. This is a webinar series where we cover topics like ADAS and AD industry trends, OEM and supplier challenges and solutions to those challenges, and vehicle software and autonomy best practices. These webinars highlight exciting industry topics, real world insights, practical solutions, and more. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Applied Intuition's automated parking development solution, which empowers ADAS engineering teams to build safe and reliable automated parking systems, or APS. I'm Michael, a product manager at Applied, where I focus on sensor simulation, generative AI, and the automated parking development solution. Before getting into the details of our solution, I'd like to briefly introduce Applied Intuition. Applied Intuition's mission is to accelerate the world's adoption of safe and intelligent machines. Our industry-leading platform shortens development cycles while ensuring that the systems are still high quality at the end. Applied Intuition empowers engineering teams to safely and efficiently develop, test, and validate ADAS systems and autonomous driving systems. The unified tool chain that we offer spans the entire development workflow and has tools ranging from those for simulation to those for data. You can also use each of these tools separately if you want. We work with a bunch of different companies and are honored to work with 18 out of the top 20 global OEMs. We also work with a bunch of startups across the autonomy and robotic space and in applications outside of automotive. Now that you know a bit about Applied, let's talk specifically about Applied's automated parking development solution. We've designed the solution to accelerate the development of automated parking systems, or APS. These systems automate or assist in parking and unparking vehicles. OEMs and Tier 1 suppliers are developing a diverse set of APS, ranging from simple visual aids, like an overlay on your rear view camera, to more advanced systems that can autonomously find the spot and park the vehicle in. Our solution supports this by providing simulation workflows and data workflows that cover the diverse range of parking ODDs, or operational design domains, all of the sensors required for parking perception systems, and finally, the breadth of test cases required to validate that a parking system is working and ready for production. There's lots of details that we're gonna get into today, but I wanna start with some context on why folks are focusing on APS today, and also some of the challenges that OEMs are seeing as they move from maybe L2 highway systems to APS. OEMs and tier one suppliers are increasingly focused on APS for a few different reasons. The first trend driving a bunch of OEMs and tier one suppliers to work on parking is tech advancement. Much of the technology being developed for L3, urban, and highway ADAS are also well suited to parking, like 360 degree surround perception. This makes it possible to develop higher quality APS in the past, which is appealing. It also means that APS is a great way to mature some of these technologies before an OEM or tier one supplier might be ready for full L3 highway development or urban development. The next trend driving people to focus on automated parking systems is customer value. Many drivers find parking stressful, especially if you need to find a spot in a congested lot, monitor pedestrians, monitor other vehicles, and make sure that you don't scratch your car while you're parking. The issue is that systems designed to help people with parking in the past have historically been pretty inconsistent, slow, and even more frustrating for drivers than parking themselves. The good thing is that with this new technology, we can automate more of the process, we can improve reliability, and ultimately, OEMs and tier one suppliers have the opportunity to actually deliver value to drivers with their automated parking systems. Finally, APS is another way for OEMs to differentiate their vehicles, especially on the premium spectrum. A high bar has been set by some of the L3 parking systems that are in production today, especially those developed by some Chinese OEMs. As a result, people who want to be technological innovators and have L3 available in their cars see APS as a way to do that. Now that we've covered why people are working on automated parking systems, we want to go through some of the challenges that we've seen when working with folks across the industry. There are many similarities between APS and highway or urban ADAS. One thing that is different is that parking happens in parking lots, which happen to be incredibly diverse. Having a diverse operational design domain, or ODD, means that there's more things you need to test your system against to make sure it's safe and reliable and functional. Parking lots range from surface parking lots to street parking lots to residential parking, underground parking, and multi-level parking. The long tail of these events is incredibly diverse as there's limited standardization across parking lots. And there's also a lack of structure. So you could have pedestrians walking around anywhere and you might even have debris or shopping carts where you're trying to park. The next challenge is that for parking, you need your sensors to provide 360 degree coverage of both nearby things 
and further off things so you can plan. L2 Highway 8 s has historically required people to just have front-facing sensors because most of the motion is going forward and vehicles tend to move predictably because they move along lanes. For automated parking, you don't have these benefits, so you need sensors that point in all sorts of different directions. Since you need sensors that work very close to the vehicle, you often also need to introduce new sensor types, like ultrasonics, that aren't typically used for highway applications. I would say the most common sensors we see used for parking are ultrasonic and fisheye cameras. The third challenge that we're going to talk about is that downstream perception from these sensors has to be accurate and classify things like parking spots across the, diver the diverse ODDs that we talked about earlier. There's some common challenges in parking, like faded parking lines or lines that have been uh, painted over twice. You can also get things like leaves covering up parking spots that aren't cleared out as often as they would be in a roadway like a highway or an urban city street. The final set of challenges that we see are in planning, prediction, and controls. One set of these challenges is due to the lack of structure in parking lots. Parking lots don't have as well-defined lanes as you get in the highway or in cities. People can even drive through parking spots from one lane into another. This lack of structure makes it hard to know how vehicles can move, and then pedestrians are a whole other topic on their own. The other challenge that you start to see is at the vehicle dynamics level, where in parking you tend to be moving slower and with high steering angles. This means that the vehicle is going to move less linearly than it would if you're steering straight and moving fast, which makes it hard to predict motion. With the challenges covered, now let's talk about how the solution helps developers tackle those challenges and accelerate development and hopefully get their systems into production. Applied has done a number of things to solve these challenges, and the first one is making sure that its simulation tools can comprehensively cover the parking operational design domain. When we talk about covering the parking operational design domain, there might be a few different things that come to mind for you. For us, it means starting out with a bunch of pre-made content to ensure that when you get the tool chain in your hands, you can start testing on the first day. This pre-made content includes ODD taxonomies that capture all of the important elements of parking lots so you can measure coverage quantitatively. It includes pre-made maps that you can run simulations on and 3D worlds that correspond to those maps for sensor simulation. It also includes pre-made scenarios or tests that you can run so you don't have to build these to start going. Beyond that, since the parking lot ODD has an incredibly long tail and is incredibly diverse, we want to make sure that our customers can kind of self-serve meeting that long tail. To that end, we have a set of customer-facing tools that enable you to customize your own maps, ODD taxonomy, generate 3D worlds, build scenarios, and beyond. We've designed these tools so you can go from seeing a new parking lot that you've never seen before in the real world to having a digital twin as fast as possible with a target time of around 30 minutes. Finally, covering your ODD doesn't just mean having simulation content and scenarios to cover it. It means actually running tests with that content. We provide flexible cloud orchestration that helps you run simulations at scale, whether it's in your own cloud, on a public cloud, or on one that Applied helps you manage. To get into this a bit more, here you can see a workflow that kind of illustrates how you might customize your own maps and get all the way to worlds that you can use for sensor simulation. You start off by importing a map. You then edit that map to add new structures or to clean up the data. Once you have that base map, which is kind of like an HD map, you put it into our 3D generation pipeline. That gives you a 3D terrain, which you can edit to increase variation or make it look closer to what you actually see in the real world. And then finally, you can run sims. Now that we've covered how you can use our solution to test across the parking operational design domain, we're going to chat about some of the different sensor simulation capabilities that we have so that you can test sensing and perception. As we talked about earlier, parking requires 360 degree perception at both near and far ranges. Most OEMs and tier one suppliers solve this with around four fisheye cameras, 12 ultrasonic sensors, and a few radars. Some variations, some people even using LiDAR. In order to test systems that rely on these sensors, you need to be able to simulate all of those different sensors. Our simulator supports all of the sensors that I just mentioned, some that I didn't mention, and can scale up to that high number of sensors, so 10, 20 plus sensors as needed. So you can not only test one isolated model, but you can test models that rely on early fusion or other techniques that requires all of the sensors all at once. Beyond that, tests can be run not only in software in the loop, but in hardware in the loop if you want to test physical sensors. Finally, continuing on the topic of customization, 
we know that there's a lot of sensor hardware out there on the market. And we know how important it is to model your exact hardware to minimize the SIM to real to main gap. To that end, the sensors can be customized to your specific hardware. And you can also co-simulate models provided by sensor vendors, which maximizes fidelity while also protecting vendor IP. Beyond tools to help you develop sensing and perception, the solution also has data tools to help you train machine learning models for the sake of perception. Typically, when it comes to ML, the quantity and quality of your data is the most direct determinant of system performance. If you want your system to work well in parking, it means you need high quality, diverse parking training data. To get this, you need to use data from a variety of different sources, and you don't just need to collect data once. You typically need to collect data, train a model, see where it's doing well, see where it's doing poorly, and then iterate again. Our parking solution has tools to help you facilitate this entire life cycle of data collection, curation, mining, management, labeling, all the way through model training and evaluation. One thing that's cool about it is we don't just use real data. We also use synthetic data to help you fill those gaps in the real data that you have and model new edge cases without having to go do a specific data collect. This can also be really helpful if you're actually expanding your parking ODD and you want to operate in countries that you've never collected data in before. Synthetic data is a way to kind of get a foundation there and transfer your existing system to that new ODD. Here you can kind of see a visual depiction of our data workflow. It always starts out with an understanding of what your system does poorly, because if you don't know what you do poorly, it's hard to prioritize data collection and be intentional. Once you've identified that issue, perhaps your system doesn't do a good job seeing faded parking lines, you then need to collect data. <clears throat> if we're working with that faded parking lines example, that might mean going out and driving around in a parking lot where you know those lines exist, or it can mean setting up a simulation and specifically setting the lines to be faded, which is one of the benefits of SIM. You can do that directly. After you've collected or generated that data, you then typically need to narrow it down. Especially when it comes to real world data collection, it's impossible to get 100% useful nutritional data. It's important to narrow this data down because you don't want to inundate your model with useless data. It makes it take longer to train. You also don't want to pay to label all that useless data. Once you've done this data curation with data mining tools or even auto curation tools that do things like comparing embeddings together, you can use our platform to take that data and get it labeled, whether that means integrating with third-party labeling providers or using some of our auto labeling tools. Finally, once you have that data set and you use it to retrain that model, you can then evaluate performance in our platform with some of the typical ML metrics that you would often use or with something that we call model unit tests which should be dedicated simulations meant to test some edge case in your model that you can run consistently to make sure that you never regress on that case. The last set of tools that we're gonna to cover today are the tools that we offer to test planning, prediction, and controls modules in a stack. So far, we've been talking about sensor simulation, which generates things like camera or LiDAR data for you to feed into your system. Our simulator can also run efficiently at the object level, which means that we feed in object lists that mock out your perception system so you can test without relying on a GPU. To facilitate object level simulation for parking, we've built out a bunch of different parking behaviors that you can use to build out scenarios with maneuvers like parallel parking. You can use these to place agents around your vehicle and test how it reacts to them. We've also integrated our simulator with CarSim Vehicle Dynamics, which ensures that we accurately capture all of those challenging dynamics problems when you're moving at lower velocities or with higher steering angles. Summarizing, we've designed our automated parking development solution to provide three benefits to ADAS and AD development teams. The first is that we want to enhance the safety and reliability of their automated parking systems. The way that we do this is by improving test coverage and by making it possible to test earlier in development and consistently throughout development. Each time code changes are made, you can run tests and make sure that you don't have regressions. We also improve reliability by adding synthetic training data or well-curated real training data to address those sticky perception edge cases that just keep showing up, but you really need to get rid of to have a stable, valuable system for your customers. The next thing that we can do is accelerate development by enabling you to rely less on real-world testing and less on real-world data collection, which take a ton of time, especially when you're expanding to new ODDs and don't have a fleet yet. The final thing that we look to do is make sure that this solution is customizable, 
We wanted to work on the first day of your program, but we also wanted to continue working with you throughout your entire program lifecycle. In order to do this, we need to make sure that your program can customize your ODD, customize your sensors, customize your vehicle dynamics, and more. We also want to make sure that you can integrate our tools with whatever else you already use. Before we close, I want to make sure to answer some of the common questions that we've gotten from our beta customers for this solution. The first question that we get is, how are we confident that the solution covers the majority of parking ODDs? In short, what we did is a statistical analysis of different parking lots. What we would do is we would sample a location, note down the different ODD elements, like the surface material, the line types, the type of curb stones. And then through sampling enough locations, we, with a specific confidence interval, can say that we cover some percentage of parking. There's definitely things that we still want to expand to, but this is how we set our roadmap and how we got to a point where we had those pre-made ODD taxonomies that we're confident in. The next question that we get is if this solution could be used to integrate systems from suppliers. Lots of OEMs out there still get parking systems from Tier 1 suppliers, and lots of Tier 1 suppliers provide awesome systems. The short answer is yes, it can be used to integrate systems. We've set up our APIs such that if you have a black box, you can feed data into it and get data out without having to worry about the internal workings. We've also done this so that you can obfuscate any IP that you're not supposed to touch. The kind of final common question that we get is how this solution is different from the other tools that we offer. The answer is it's the same tools. We've just paid more attention to parking, and we've made sure that the tools are going to provide an awesome experience for your program as you onboard and use them throughout your production lifecycle. This is something that we're trying to do with additional verticals or applications of autonomy in the future, so look out for further solutions. If you already use our tools, these features will be coming your way, uh, so feel free to reach out to your contact and we can talk about how you can start developing and testing parking with Applied's tools. Thank you again for your time today. I know that was a lot of content. Hopefully you learned something about automated parking, some of the challenges that come with developing it, and some of the ways that our tools can help you out. If you want to learn more, we have some content on AppliedIntuition.com. You can follow us on X or LinkedIn for future talks like this one, or you can just reach out to your team and I'm happy to tell you more about our tools and kind of figure out with you how it could solve some of your problems. Thanks again.